the nuclear bomb, the weapon of massive destruction, the missiles that carry destruction. So what is this nuclear bomb? How does it work? What's the science behind it? To understand what are nuclear bombs, first you must understand two things. The atomic structure and radioactivity. These are taught in high school physics and chemistry class. Never mind, let's go through them briefly. The atom is made up of three main subatomic particles. At the center is the nucleus which carries protons and neutrons. Around the nucleus are electrons orbiting in different paths. Here protons are positively charged while the electrons are negatively charged. The neutron is chargedness. If we change the number of protons in an atom, entirely new element is created. But if we change the number of neutrons, something called isotopes are created. For example, hydrogen has three isotopes, protium, deuterium and tritium. Protium has one proton, one neutron, one electron. So it's normal, it's like normal hydrogen. Next comes deuterium. It has one proton, one electron and two neutrons. Next comes tritium. We have one proton, three neutrons and one electron. This makes the element highly unstable and begin to emit radiation in a process called radioactive decay. So when making bombs, what we do is to destabilize an atom. There are many ways to destabilize an atom, but when we talk about nuclear bombs, we discuss about fusion and fission. Now fission means splitting an atom into two by bombarding it with a neutron. When an atom is split into two, it ejects neutrons and bursts of electromagnetic energy called gamma rays. Now fusion on the other hand brings the nucleus of two atoms together forming a single larger atom. This is how our sun produces energy, nuclear fusion. Now scientists after many failures and experimentation finally they found out that uranium-235 was the best element which could produce a fission reaction. Uranium-235's nucleus will absorb the neutron and become heavily unstable and break down into two atoms creating more neutrons. These neutrons will bombard again with uranium-235 atoms and do the same. This creates a fission chain reaction. This process happens in a very 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 less period of time. In a matter of picoseconds. Now that's just 1 into 10 to the power minus 12 seconds. Or simply 0 0.00000000000000 one second. Yeah, that's 11 zeros. By propelling a uranium-235 block onto another material becomes super critical. Fission begins as I said before. In a split second, nuclear energy is released creating a massive destruction. Now there are also plutonium bombs. For example, the bomb dropped on Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb. A few pounds are concentrated at the center of the bomb. By simultaneously causing explosions all around, the material is compressed and becomes supercritical and explodes. Now all I was talking about was nuclear fission. Can we produce bombs with nuclear fusion? Of course. Such an example is the hydrogen bomb. The nuclear fusion is a reaction that releases atomic energy by union of light nuclei at higher temperatures to form heavier atoms. Now hydrogen bombs which use nuclear fusion have higher destruction power and greater efficiencies than atomic bombs. Due to the high temperatures required to initiate a nuclear fusion reaction, the process is often referred as the thermonuclear explosion. This is typically done with isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, which fuse together to form helium atoms. This led to the term hydrogen bomb to describe the deuterium tritium fusion bomb. Now there are 9 countries with ballistic nuclear weapons, among them USA, Russia and China have weapon powers enough to hit any target on earth. So nuclear bombs are a great threat to not only humans but also to the whole earth including everything. Let's expect that a world war 3 won't happen any day. However, this is how nuclear bombs work. See you guys soon in another interesting video. Until then, bye bye.